Oh yeah, it's that time again. Back with another live stream. Ross Alex here. What is up? What is up, people? Facebook, YouTube. What's happening? Uh, thanks for tuning in. It's a late night broadcast here, 9.30. Where are the hustlers at? Where are the freaking late night grinders at? You know, I was just thinking to myself before, I don't think I'm ever going to be the person to go to sleep at 9 p.m. Like, it's just not in my DNA. <laughs> Unless I'm like uh, not sleeping for 36 hours, I'm just a late night person. Like, who else comes alive when the sun goes down, right? Like, when I'm, I don't know. When when when, when 9.30 comes, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, it's like, I just want to grind. I just want to hustle. There's no distractions. It's quiet. Lock in in front of the computer and just get shit done. And uh, that does mean that I don't wake up at 5 a.m. I don't. I'm the one person that'll tell you. I don't wake up at 5 a.m. And I don't wake up at 6 a.m. either. But you know, it's not what time you wake up, okay? I believe that. I believe that it's not what time you wake up. It's what you do with your time when you are up, right? If you wake up at noon, okay? There's people that wake up at noon that get way more done than people that, than people that wake up at 6. And, and, and vice versa, okay? Uh, so let me know. Are you a morning person or are you a night person? Jonatus is running comps. But what is up to everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Ross Alex. I'm a full-time real estate entrepreneur. I've been investing in real estate for the past five years in the Houston, Texas area. And I live stream each and every single day, almost every single day, uh, on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, and tonight, I wanted to talk about real estate wholesaling versus rehabbing, right? The pros and the cons and share with you kind of like my journey over the last five years and uh, what's gotten me to where I'm at, right? And, and kind of how I did things. Uh, there's many, many different strategies out there that you can use when you're getting, in start, uh, getting started in real estate, right? Real estate's like a huge umbrella, and then there's all these different niches right under that umbrella, right? You have single family, you have multifamily, you have commercial, you have land, you have wholesaling, you have subject twos, you have owner financing. There's literally so many strategies, right? And I know that at first it could be a little intimidating, right? It's like, well, what do I do, right? What do I do? What strategy do I choose? What strategy works best for my situation? And by the way, if you are here right now, on the broadcast, I would really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button because it'll help me out more than you know and it'll help this video get seen by more and more and more people. Uh, so real estate wholesaling and rehabbing real estate, single family real estate are probably two of the most talked about strategies in real estate, okay? And if you're here on this broadcast, I've assumed that you've probably heard about both of them. If you haven't, uh, don't worry, uh, I'll get to that in a second. I'll kind of just go briefly into what each one is. Uh, but they're both very, very accessible, okay? So I'm gonna start off by saying this. There's a lot of people out there that I'll tell you that it's easier, okay? And, and I hate the word easy. I, I genuinely hate the word easy. I, I believe that nothing worth having is easy, okay? Like nothing... Of, of a lot of substance is easy, right? You gotta work, you gotta hustle. Any business, any industry, you gotta really put in work if you want results. So I hate the word easy, but there is a lot of people that say that real estate wholesaling is the easy way to get started. And I could not disagree with that more, okay? I could not disagree with that more. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna provide facts and opinions as to why I don't agree with that, okay? So a lot of people get started wholesaling. Now, wholesaling is great. I love real estate wholesaling, but there are a few things that you really should know about real estate wholesaling and about rehabbing so that you can choose which one would be best for you to get started. Uh, and if you wanna do both, that's great as well. 
So real estate wholesaling is super simple, right? Uh, think about this, right? Real estate wholesaling is simply you finding people that want to sell their property for whatever reason, okay? And when you find those people using things like this or using letters or using signs, uh, you negotiate, you agree on a price, and it simply says, I, buyer, agree to buy your property for $100,000. Now, you've already ran your numbers, you've ran your comps, you've analyzed the property, and you know that that house could sell to another investor for a markup, right? So let's just say you can, you know you can sell that property for 110,000 to another investor, that would make you 10,000. So what you would do is you would simply sign over the paper or it's called an assignment. You would assign that piece of paper that says that you have the option to another buyer, an end investor, somebody who is going to keep that property as a rental or keep that property as a fix and flip and you, the person for orchestrating the whole thing, would get paid your fee, which is 10000 Now, that's great, okay? In theory, it's great. In reality, it's great. But there's a few things that not a lot of people talk about that you should definitely know. Um, real estate wholesaling is seen as a very, uh, you know, a very good starting point for a lot of people because it requires very little capital investment out of your own pocket. Okay, so you can essentially start a real estate wholesaling company tomorrow and might cost you a hundred bucks, right, to start your business. In fact, it's probably gonna cost you more to start an LLC for that business than it is to actually get started. Uh, and there's a lot of free methods and of course there's a lot of paid methods that you can use to, to get motivated sellers. One of the free methods would be word of mouth. One of the free methods would be knocking on doors. And one of the paid methods would be direct mail or even door hangers just like this. So there's a lot of methods that you can use, but there's a very, very low barrier of entry, right? Anybody can do this. Anybody can get started and you can probably do it in every single market in the United States. However, you know, each state is going to vary, uh, you know, different state laws and whatnot, but you can pretty much do this stuff literally anywhere. And it could be, it could be a very, a very, uh, a very nice money maker. You could make some money. I've made, you know, tens of thousands of dollars just simply wholesaling real estate, taking on very, very, very little risk. But a lot of people see that I fix and flip real estate, right? And that's like my main hustle is I buy properties for cash where unlike wholesaling, I'm the one that's actually paying for the house. I fix it up, right? I renovate it, I make the improvements, I make the upgrades, and then I sell it on the market to another buyer, okay? And that buyer is not an investor, that buyer is a homeowner, right? That person's buying this property to live in it, okay? So uh, the only difference is when I buy property, uh, you know, as a rehabber, is I'm the one that's actually doing the meat and the potatoes, ripping out the walls, taking on the risk. Okay. And that's the rehabbing business. Okay. It's the foot. <laughs> I got the foot here. Uh, <laughs> what's up Deshaun? So that's the rehabbing business, right? You're buying property, you're renovating it and you're keeping it, uh, you're, you're going to fix and flip it and sell it to an end investor. Okay. Now wholesaling typically takes a few weeks to maybe a few months in some cases, if you're working a special kind of deal, like a probate or a divorce or something along those lines. Whereas rehabbing, you're pretty much committing to a four to five month, maybe even six month or longer process. At my price point, my rehabs take about four to five months uh, from start to finish, okay? Now, typically, uh, if you're buying properties as a rehabber the right way, your profits on the back end are gonna be far more than what the person made on the front end if you bought it from a wholesaler. Now, not all the time, but typically that's what happens, right? Rehab profits are bigger, um, but not all the times. And you might not always buy it from a wholesaler. You might buy it off the MLS from the bank, or you might even combine the two, do your own marketing, get your own deals, negotiate your own deals and get the lowest possible price 
so that you rehab the property and you have a massive, massive spread. And we call those unicorn deals, right? Because they're far and few between. Not every deal is going to be a unicorn deal, but it doesn't mean you can't rehab it. So why do I focus on rehabbing versus real estate wholesaling? Well, I didn't get started wholesaling real estate. In fact, I got started renovating properties. That's literally how I got started from day one. And I didn't find out about real estate wholesaling until a few months into my real estate career. Okay. And I've been doing that for the past five years. So there's a reason though. There's a reason why I sway towards the rehabbing and not the wholesaling, even though I highly recommend wholesaling. I love the business model, but where I'm at in my personal life, it rehabbing just works better for me. Uh, so there are pros and cons. If you're here right now, what I want you to do, guys, we're dropping value. We're dropping content. Please go ahead and let me know that you're here. Tyrone is in the building. What is up, my man? Please let me know that you're here. Let's get some engagement going. Just say, hey, hey, Ross, I'm here. That's all I need from you. Okay. That's all I need because it's going to help this video do better. And I'm desperate. I'm desperate for the, for the engagement because Facebook is sucks nowadays. Uh, <laughs> thank you for tuning in, Travis, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's talk about the pros and, and the cons. Okay. There's a lot of people that think that real estate wholesaling is, like I said, easier to get into, but that's just not true. Okay. The only thing that changes is the hat that you wear in the transaction, okay? And done properly and systemized properly, rehabbing, renovating property, okay, is actually just as easy, if not easier, and I hate that word, look, I'm putting the easy, than wholesaling, okay? Uh, if done right, if systemized properly, okay? Real estate wholesaling requires a lot of work, a lot of work, okay? Uh, a lot of hustle, a lot of grind, okay? Essentially, think about real estate wholesaling like it's a job, and it is. It is a job, right? Because if you don't go out there and get motivated sellers, you're not going to have any leads, you're not gonna have any contracts, and you're not gonna have any income opportunity present. So you have to go out there and hustle and grind to go get that next deal. And a lot of people are willing to do that, right? A lot of people are willing to put in that hustle. But anybody that tells you that wholesaling real estate is not a job is lying to you because it is a job. Now, are there ways to systemize it and streamline it? There are. There definitely are. That's Nicole. Uh, there are, but for the most people, for the majority of people that will wholesale a deal are putting in a lot of work, a lot of grind. I remember early on in my game, I was driving hours and hours and hours a day, touring property, knocking on doors, putting out door hangers, right? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of grind. And for me, I was bartending five years ago and that's a job, I can, you know, it's, I can't even believe it's been that long. Like time really does fly. It really does. Who agrees with that? Does time fly? Yes or no? Well, yo, Junior, what's up, man? What is your view on Airbnb for rental properties? Love it. Uh, Tyrone says rehab. Love it. Um, so by the way, Airbnb, if you listen to podcasts, uh, How I Built This by Guy Raz did an episode about with the founder of Airbnb and they have a phenomenal story. Like this guy has probably one of the coolest entrepreneurial stories I've ever heard. Um, th there's a reason why it's Airbnb because uh, there was an air bed involved. Super cool. Go listen to it. Highly recommend. Um, but when I was bartending, right, I really wanted to get out of my job. And uh, I started looking at the wholesaling game, and I was already doing a few rehabs at the time, and, 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 and just the amount of work that it took to actually do this and, and get results with this was just a little not to my liking, okay? Let's just say that. It was just a little not to my liking, whereas when I buy a house to rehab it, okay, let's really think about that. Deals are brought to me, okay? 
I can go through my email literally every day and make offers on property from my computer because other people are bringing me the deals, right? Other people are scouting deals, okay? Nicole is so afraid to be on camera. She's, she just creeped right by as if like, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Oh, what, what are you doing in my bathroom? I have to get something. Get out. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, before I lost my train of thought, okay, um, deals are brought to me. When you're looking to renovate real estate, deals are going to be brought to you as well. How? Because you can find deals on MLS, REO deals. They're out there. Anybody who ever says you cannot make money ML on MLS is bullshit. That is the biggest Bullshit, I hate when people say that. Now, can you get better deals off market? Of course you can. I just bought a house off MLS for 81,000. It's worth 170,000, okay? Uh, so you absolutely can. You just need to know how to separate trash from the treasure. But deals are brought to you, okay? Um, when you need to pay for the property, there are literally, there's lenders everywhere. You go to a real estate networking event, there's 10 hard money lenders all giving their pitch, begging you to take their money to buy property, okay? So much so that some hard money lenders are not even checking credit scores. They're, they're truly asset-based lending. They don't even care about your credit score. They just care about the deal and, 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 and they believe in you, right? Like they, they wanna make sure that they're doing business with the right person and the deal is right. There's lenders everywhere, okay? For right now, where we're at in the economy right now, there's lenders everywhere, okay? So getting financing for a deal is not difficult at all, okay? Whether you go the hard money route or you go the private money route. Number three, construction, okay? Probably the most important part about rehabbing a house is getting the right crew. You gotta have the right crew because if you don't have the right crew, you can. this business will spit you out. I swear to I swear to you, you need to have the right crew. And any person that renovates real estate will tell you, you got to have the right crew, okay? But there's so many resources out there to find the right crew. One of the things I tell people is if you're looking for a crew, just go meet a rehabber and say, hey, who are you using as a crew, right? Are you willing to share that resource with me? Uh, in Houston, there's tons of crews. In Phoenix, there's tons of crews. Like investor community, uh, investor world, you meet them at networking events, so on and so forth, right? So you hire the crew, okay? They do all the work. You don't even have to pick up a hammer. I have not picked up a hammer in five years. I've never taped and floated. I've never laid tile. I've never installed counters. I've never done any of that. Not one bit. That's just not my thing. I suck at construction. Maybe you enjoy it. And that's cool. But for me, I've never done that stuff. But I have a crew, right? Be the expert at hiring experts, okay? So you get a crew. Robert, what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. You get a crew to do all the work, okay? Now the work's done. You check in periodically, so on and so forth. And uh, the work's done. The product is finished. And it looks freaking sick, right? You want to share with all your friends. You take pride in it because it's like, man, look at the before and the after. The transformation is sexy. You don't get that when you when you wholesale. You don't get that, that, that vibe, that excitement of like, holy crap, look what we just did, right? That's another really cool part about rehabbing is you get that, especially for all the people that rehab, you know, super old houses, like historical houses and like, you know, uh, it, it it gets intense and it gets super cool and super fun. Anyways, um, now what you do is you hire a real estate agent, okay? You should have some connections. If you don't, start meeting some at your networking events. You should have some connections where that person, that agent is going to list your deal. So they're going to sell your deal. They're going to handle all the paperwork. And then all that needs to happen is you just sign off, right? Like paperwork comes through. You sign off and that's it. You go to close and you get paid. So you're actually a lot less involved if you do it the right way, if you do it the systemized way. There's a lot of people out there that say, you know, rehabbing, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of, uh, it's really not as long as you streamline it and systemize it, okay? And, and you have the right people. Teamwork makes the dream work. In real estate, 
you got to have a team. You have to have a rock star, superstar team that gets shit done. Okay. People that you can trust. People that will do right by you. Because it can go seriously, seriously wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much right. Like I'm able to do five to 10 rehabs at a time and I can travel. I can hang out at home. I'm in my office right now, right? I can do whatever I need to do because I know that my crew is handling stuff. Now I would never recommend anybody that's brand new to this game to do it that way. You should probably show up at your rehabs a lot more frequently, but that's what it could look like, right? That's what it could look like. Now, on the flip side, wholesaling requires a lot more drive, a lot more face-to-face, -face, right? Where you have to meet with people and negotiate with people. And it's just, it's a lot more intense on the, on the work side from you, unless you streamline it. And there are ways to do that, right? But, um... I also want to add this as well, okay? Because I know I'm making rehabbing sound like so great, you know, you do this, people do the work for you, that you know, you get the loans, you're out of you're out of pocket zero dollars, right? No money out of pocket. I don't think I you know, I've yeah. You're you're you know, you're getting into these home run deals, right? And then you're picking up a nice 30, 40k check, depending on what it is for you in your market, some markets, you know, the average rehab might pay out 60, 70 K and uh, you just rinse and repeat the process right now. I do want to say this because I'm not going to be doing justice to this conversation. My man, Bryce McKinley, what's happening, bro? Good to see you, man. Uh, so there's also the other side of rehabbing. Okay. Which is if you don't do things the right way, you will learn a very expensive lesson. Number one. Number two, stuff comes up all the time. Just when you think you're, you're headed to the promised land, stuff comes up, okay? And this stuff, if not prepared for, could be very expensive and blow a deal, okay? It could easily blow a deal, especially if you're not buying Right. Okay. And I'll give you an example. Okay. No matter how many times you have flipped the house. All right. I want you to remember this. No matter how many times you have flipped the house, no matter how good you are, every single rehab that you do, because these are not new houses, will always have something come up on the inspection. Always. Okay. No matter how nice the house looks on the outside, there's always going to be something. And you have to plan for this, my friends. You have to plan for this and work this in your numbers. So I just got, I'm in contract to sell a few houses right now. And I just got one of the inspection reports back. And then the buyers come and they say, hey, we want you to do this, this, and this. I'll give just a little preview. It's nothing serious, but this is what it looks like, right? This is all the things they want. Sewer line stuff, you know, electrical stuff, right? So that's like a little... Just a little taste of what could happen. And that's why you want to make sure that you're planning for this type of stuff and you're working your numbers right so that when this stuff happens, it doesn't blow a deal. So is there more risk involved when you're rehabbing? Of course there is. There's, there's absolutely more risk involved. But what's the old saying, right? Big risk, big reward, right? You're, 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 you're going to make money if you do it the right way and you follow the, the, the process. Okay. Yes, sir. I was going to say, uh, not out of pocket, uh, until stuff comes up wholesale like me, I ought to virtually no risk out of pocket, no risk. Can't wait. Yeah, absolutely. So see, so Bryce, and that's a great point, right? And this isn't a, a bash wholesaling video at all because I've wholesaled plenty and plenty of deals, but, um, the whole no risk thing in wholesaling appeals to a lot of people, right? Because you're not actually putting up someone's cash or borrowing money or investing your own capital besides marketing. But in my, in my opinion, I've been doing this for, for years now, wholesaling real estate just takes a lot more hustle. Whereas rehabbing real estate could just be a lot more streamlined. Like personally, my crew and all the other rehabs on here chime in. 
my crew doesn't even want me to be on job sites because they think I get in the way, right? So it's kind of like a turnkey process where it's like, hey, here's the keys. I'm going to check in with you over the next couple of weeks, you know, but we've been working together for five years and it's streamlined, which brings me to the next thing. Anything you do in the rehabbing space, my friends, relationships are so important. Build relationships. In one of my courses, I say very early on, okay, when you're looking for people to work with, like agents, like contractors, like wholesalers, right? You simply have to say, hey, look, I'm looking for a crew that can handle about three to five rehabs at a time and I'm going to plan I'm planning on buying a hundred of these things okay so I'm looking to build a long lasting relationship with the right person is that you okay the second question is have you worked with investors before no bro I know I was busting chops Richard and Richard we all special like hey man bro we love busting chops around here Bryce we love busting those chops man keep busting them <laughs> So, um, you know, you want to build those long-term relationships, long-term relationships, relationships. <laughs> um, so that's that. Now, guys, listen, we got 15 people in the building right now. If you're watching this live, can you go ahead? Just let me know that you're here in the, in the, in, in the chat. Just let me know. Charlie just joined in. Nathan's here. Josh is here. Josh, man, I tried to buy that deal from you yesterday, bro. <laughs> Uh, Frank, what's up, buddy? What about uh, need of a lawyer in the team? Is it needed? So, Janie, uh, fortunately for us, we live here in Texas. We have title companies. These title companies have lawyers that work at these offices. And most of the stuff that you're going to need done in the real estate flipping business can be handled by the attorneys that work at these title companies. So um, that's all good there. Uh, Junior just became a rehabber. That's freaking awesome, man. That's awesome, man. Derek, what's up, bud? That's that Shot Town love, man. I'll be home this weekend. Dude, are you from Chicago, Bryce? I've never been to the Shy, man. That's one place like I really do want to visit. Uh, but it, in the summertime, because those temperatures, man. Come on. Come on. Derek, what's happening? Um, so... Just to recap, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about real estate wholesaling versus rehabbing, right? And uh, the pros and the cons. I guess like my 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 point here is Englewood, bro, Southside. Damn, Bryce, you from the hood, my dude? I've heard about Englewood, Illinois, <laughs> Chicago, man. My man Bryce is is from the streets. I love it, bro. <laughs> I'm glad, uh, you know, you're doing your thing, man. I've heard about that. Because I've actually, I had a student, mind you. Uh, his name was Vin, his name's Vincent. And uh, he's from uh, Cicero. So I don't know too much about Illinois, the like Chicago area. But Cicero and uh, there was another town. He was, he was finding some deals out that way, man. He was finding some deals on the wholesale side in, in those areas. And then he was driving like 30 minutes to, uh, to Wisconsin and he was finding deals up there. So, cause it's not too far, right? So, uh, much love to the whole shy and everybody that's out there. Um, so we're talking about real estate wholesale versus rehabbing, right? And, and, and here's the point. Okay. For anybody that's brand new to the game, I, I want to be very, very clear about this. Real estate wholesaling is not easier than rehabbing. It's just not. It's just not. So if anybody's ever told you that, it's just not not the case. Um, it, it might be more accessible for people because they don't have the systems in place yet or they think they don't have the systems. Like if you've ever, if you've never rehabbed the house, I have an exercise for you, right? Google hard money lenders in your area and go through the pre-approval process. You will be shocked at just how simple of a process it is to get pre-approved with hard money to go out there and start shopping a deal. And most of these hard money lenders, they'll fund your deal in like 48 hours, 
right? So I think a lot of people just don't know how simple and accessible it really is to rehab real estate. You're just the one taking on more of the of the work, right? You're, you're, you gotta manage the crews and manage the operation, but once you get it going and the wheels are turning, you know, it's, it's, it's seamless. It really is, it's, it's seamless. And, and don't get me wrong, while wholesaling may be, you know, people's promised land, which is, which is, which is fine, there's things that can go wrong on the wholesale side as well, right? There are things that can go wrong. For example, you know, I've had deals fall out of contract, investors back out, homeowners get furious, threaten to sue, right? All these like emotions are flowing, you know, just there is a, at least a little bit of risk involved on the wholesale side where you're making certain promises and you just need to make sure that you deliver. Um, but the main thing for me is just the work, like, right? I, I'd rather be running the operation from up here versus being in the field, you know, hitting the ground running, spending 10, 15 hours a day out in the neighborhoods, touring deals, meeting with sellers, then just looking through my my email, like I'll show you right now. I think this is my buddy Cody, I think. Let me make sure it's, yeah. So Cody just sent out this deal. I don't know if you're here, Cody, but I was just looking at this one, right? So a deal like this, what I would do is I would take this address, I'd run it through real acquisitions, I'd do some quick analysis on it, right? And, uh, you know, this might be a deal. Now, all I would have to do to lock up this deal, it's going to be $2,000 earnest money, right? I'll just call Cody or email him and say, hey, I want to go out there and see the deal. Let's take a look at these pictures. And if everything looks good, I'll, uh, I'll reach out to my lenders, lock it up, close on it, get the crew out there. And in, you know, four to five months, we will be selling it on the retail market, right? So in these deals, you know, to buy on the rehab side, it's not difficult, man. The deals are out there. You just got to know where to look. Yes, sir. Don't Nobody hustle like we do. Chirac. Chirac. My man been on that Chief Keith. Is the hottest market at the moment. We closed 27 last month there alone. Woo, Bryce closing deals. I love it, man. 8% in Cali, ouch. No risk, just drama. So like I said, my friends, it's up to you to decide which one you wanna do. If it was up to me and I could like map out your business plan, if you're brand new, I would do both. I would do both because there's a lot of time where it makes more sense to wholesale a deal than it does to rehab it. Because not every deal is is ready or right for a rehab. It's just not, right? Not every single deal. If that was the case, I'd buy 100 houses a month. Um, but not every deal makes sense numbers-wise to rehab, right? And uh, they make more sense to keep them as rentals. But if you don't want to buy single-family rentals, you can simply wholesale it to a, uh, a landlord, right? So you can make a ton of money with both strats and I would do both, okay? Especially if you have the time and you don't mind getting out in the field and getting dirty, I would go out there and find your next rehab project on your own, on your own, right? I mean, you think if you're, if you, if a wholesaler is making 15 K on a deal, let's just say a deal is a hundred K and a seller is willing to sell it for 85, locks it up with a wholesaler for 85 and you buy it for a hundred K, yeah, you weren't the one to go out there and find that deal and negotiate with the seller and contract that deal and all that good stuff, but you are paying that wholesaler 15K, right? Which is a beautiful thing because that person's making money, you're gonna make money, everybody wins. But if you were the one to get that deal yourself, you're making $15,000 more on the back end because you got it for, for cost, right? You got it for what the seller was willing to sell it for. So that's why I would say, I would say both. Okay. Now, a lot of people, there's a whole nother niche out there. A lot of people typically like corporate America workers, 
you know, accountants, doctors, they don't have the time to do either. So rental real estate is what really appeals to them because they want to buy property, tenant occupy it, throw it under management and just collect the cash every single month, right? Um, but rental real estate on the residential side does not make sense unless you're doing it at scale. There's just, there's way too much headache and you're not going to make money if you're just doing like one or two rentals. Um, and that's just my opinion. Yeah, you might make a couple hundred bucks here and there every month cash flow wise and build up some equity, but but rental real estate on the single family side, it only works at scale. Uh, you're better off just going out there and buying a small apartment building uh, and have one roof as opposed to, you know, two or three roofs and three tenants and toilet problems. But that's just my opinion. So Carlos, 8% in Cali. Ouch. 8% for what, man? Bryce says do both. So anyways, I hope uh, I hope this helped a few people uh, that are new. Let me know. I'm curious in chat right now. Have you done a deal yet? Yes or no? Type one in the chat right now. You see the chat right there. Just pull up your keypad. Press the number one. Hit send. If you have done a deal. Wholesale, rehab, uh, or even a rental. Now, if you've never done a deal, okay, um, open up the keypad right there and press number two. Because I'm curious, right? I'm curious to see who has done deals. Awesome. Ben's done deals. Love it. Here's another really cool thing that, that you could do as well, right? You could um, start wholesaling a deal or two build up some cash and then use that cash to fuel the rehab engine, right? Now, I'll also say this, cause I don't know if I talked about this. Speed, generally speaking, wholesaling is a lot faster than rehabbing. So if you are somebody right now that's like, shit, I need to make some dough. I need to get out of my job. All I need is 25K to be able to quit and go all in. Wholesaling would definitely be the better option for you to start. 100%. Right? Because it's just faster. But it all comes down to your preference, right? It all comes down to your risk tolerance, your preference. Um, you know, it comes down to your skills, right? Not everybody likes to be, uh, you know, eyeball to eyeball with sellers. Some people just want to do stuff behind the scenes, right? So, uh, but anyways, uh, how long have I been live for, man? 38 minutes. Holy smokes, man. Time flies on the live. Guys, listen, if you're here right now on the broadcast, okay, I just have one favor. If you got value at all tonight, if you learned something, if I inspired you, if I set the light bulb off and now you're like, man, I got to go find a deal to rehab tomorrow, any of the above, please go ahead. Just take one second. Hit that thumbs up button. Okay. Hit that thumbs up button, please. Because it'll help me out a lot. Even if you're watching this at a later time on YouTube, please hit that like button. By the way, as of today, I just hit on YouTube. I've been uploading on YouTube a lot more lately. I just hit 520 subscribers, which is insane for me. Because I, I've never even been on YouTube like that before. But... I have a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of videos. Check this out. This is my YouTube channel, right? I literally, you can go back. You want to see what I was doing on my come up four years ago, right? Three years ago. You can check out these videos like this one. Look, look at this one, man. Coming at you live right now in Laporte, Texas. This is, I'll never and forget this we had. Right now, going in here, it's the perfect size. I got these property uh, this tours. Awesome because and then of course here you can, if you want to see what I was doing oh man this one was cool this was a uh, uh, a property tour that I did with a bunch of people that came out from all over the place so you could check this stuff out check this one out anyways tons of content make sure you subscribe over on YouTube if you haven't already, check this one out. Oh, this flip was, this flip was nuts, dude. 
I remember this one. It was like 120 degrees this day. So if you want to see how I came up and what I was doing back then, uh, you know, go go check out my YouTube, man. Go go hit the subscribe button. Let's see if I can get to 520 subscribers. And uh, I would really appreciate it. So thanks for stopping by, man. You guys are awesome. You, some of you are just so quiet, man. Like live streaming would be so much more fun if you guys actually engaged, man. Like I, when I do my crypto streams, We'll have like 500, 600 comments, people just having fun, having a laugh. But when I talk about real estate, everybody's just so quiet. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. But I do thank you for being here anyway, even though you're being quiet. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you uh, go out there tomorrow and you freaking crush it, man. That's what I hope for you because the summer is coming. It's going to be a hot summer. <laughs> Things are heating up right now. Look at the statistics. Things are definitely heating up right now here in Texas. If you're out here, if you're not, I don't know what, what the market's like like uh, for you. But uh, always remember too, you know, a lot of people are talking about the real estate, you know, predictions, crash, whatever. My friends, you can wholesale in a in an up market, in a down market. You can wholesale in both markets. You can buy rental property in both markets. Okay, now in a down market, I wouldn't really recommend rehabbing, I would just switch up the strategy, right? You could buy properties for, you know, 20, 30, 40 K because everything's on sale and you can wholesale properties to landlords, right? Google and hard money lenders now. Oh, Janie, I have some personal connections too. If you want, just inbox me. I'll give you some personal connections of people that I, I, I know. Um, but anyways, thank you for being here. If you guys have any questions, post them in the replay. I'll answer them. And as always, stay fired up, man. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.